It's time to build a prom for everyone. Show them all it can be done. If music plays and no one cares who your unruly heart loves. Hi everybody, my name is Charles and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, yes, my name is Charles and welcome. So today we're going to be talking about the new movie Prom from Ryan Murphy starring Meryl Streep, James Corden, Nicole Kidman, Keegan-Michael Key, Andrew Rannells, Kerry Washington, Ariana DeBose, and Joellen Pelman. Man, that is a mouthful to say, the whole cast. And you know, there's also like Tracy Ullman and Mary Kay Place like in like very, very supporting roles. But yeah, I was like, whew, saying all these names is very, very difficult and in the correct order nonetheless. So if you didn't know, The Prom is based off the musical The Prom that came out in 2018 and it premiered on Broadway in 2018 and I just have to say that even though I love the cast of this movie, I think it really sucks that Ryan Murphy and like the people who made The Prom made the whole entire cast of the original Prom musical audition and he didn't even cast any of them. I'm like, I know this cast that we have is great but... I don't know, I just have very uh, feelings that the people involved with the original musical had to audition and then that none of them got it. I mean, that's kind of uh. But then again, it's Ryan Murphy. Ryan Murphy really does love his star power, so none of the people from the original prom had star power, so of course he was never going to cast them, but uh, it just sucks. It just sucks, you know? So The Prom is a story about a high schooler named Emma, and she just wants to go to her prom with her girlfriend. But you know, she lives in Indiana, which is a conservative state. She lives in Edgewater, Indiana. And you know, the PTA is like, girl, we do not like gay people here. And instead of letting Emma just go to the prom, they're just like, we're just going to cancel prom altogether. That way, no one gets to have a prom. And you know, everyone in her high school is mad at her because they're like, you are the reason why we have no prom. And my mind is just like, whoa. Y'all should be mad at your parents for being so discriminatory. It is just gross, and uh, it really was just uh, how they were so mad at Emma. The news of what happens to Emma spreads all the way to Broadway, where four Broadway stars who are all dwindling in their star power see this, and they use this as their like opportunity to get good publicity for them and to maybe help their stars all rise again. So they go down to Edgewater, Indiana, in hopes to try to help her, and you know, not only help her, but you know, make themselves look better in the process. Overall, I found the movie to be very sweet, very heartwarming, and very touching. And I know that some people, and when I say some people, I mean like people in the gay community are saying that we are past movies like this, but I don't know. I found it very nice, and I actually cried twice while watching the movie, so I don't know. It meant something to me watching, so clearly we aren't past it if people like me are still being like affected and like this kind of stuff. I mean, the argument is that we shouldn't be like accepting these small steps that movies like this are doing, but you know what? This isn't as small step taking as Love, Simon was. I felt that movie, when actually thinking about it later on after I watched that movie for the first time, I was like, yeah, Love, Simon is like tiny, tiny incremental steps toward like where we should be going. This movie, I feel like it takes at least a few steps unlike Love, Simon, which took like maybe like a tiptoe forward. This one I felt took a few steps forward in the right direction. But you know, some people in the gay community want like, you know, us to take further strides. And I'm like, it's always hard to just go further. You know, sometimes we just have to ease people into it. I know we shouldn't be waiting for people to become comfortable with like, content from queer people, like, and seeing us in our, our authentic selves, but at the same time, it's like, no studio is going to give us money to be making stories about ourselves, and like, they barely want to cast movies with, like, actual gay, like, you know, actors, as is evidenced with James Corden in this movie, but it's just so complicated, because I want to see very authentic queer stories and stories about us and like not having to care about straight people and what they think about us and not us giving them like forgiveness and closure but that's all the kind of movies that Hollywood wants to make about like gay people and queer people in general so I don't know it's so complicated. I really do hope for the day that there's a filmmaker who's able to make a story about queer people that is like not like pandering towards straight people but it just shows us in like general and how we really are and that like straight people will just like flock to it and like actually see how we are and like it and give it like the boost it needs for studios to see that people want to see this but for now I'm just like movies about gay people and queer people in general just aren't getting the big like audience boost that they need for studios to be like yes we will make this content you really have to strong arm studios to make content like this like this and love Simon in the first place so 
imagine how hard it would be to like actually make a really, really, really good authentic queer story. It would be almost impossible right now. If you want a good story about gay people or people in the LGBTQ community in general, you usually have to be in a period piece. It is, uh, uh, or you have to be in like some distant location, like, and it's basically only like the two stars of the movie by themselves, like a broke back mountain or a God's own country or a disobedience. Like they don't, it's very hard to make a movie about like queer people where it's like, we are queer with a lot of people in the present time and just being us. That is a very hard movie to make and us just being happy. Oh my God, that is so hard for studios to like approve of stories like that. They for some reason don't want to see that and I'm just like, ugh. Anyways, going back to the prom, I really did find the movie to be sweet and heartwarming and I'm just like, can we just be mad at studios for not approving like even better queer stories instead of being mad at this movie for its small steps it makes? I mean, come on people, it makes steps and it's like progression nonetheless, so. Ah, the whole cast gives a great performance. I mean, James Corden gives an okay performance, but it's electric chair for James Corden. He has the electric chair waiting for him, or he can choose the guillotine, one of the two. He really shouldn't have been cast in this movie at all. The guy from the original musical should have been cast, but you know, as I said, Ryan Murphy loves his stars, so he got James Corden, and ugh. But anyway, Ariana DeBose, she is the person in this movie giving the best performance. Every time she was on screen, I was like, wow. You are serving beauty. You are serving talent. I was just pulled in by what she was doing this whole movie and I was like, we better watch out because I feel a star on the rise with her. The look of the movie was very, as people said, jewel tone. It was very colorful, but in my opinion, it was colorful to the point where it was almost distracting. I mean, you can look at a Douglas Sirk movie or you can even look at a Pedro Almodovar movie and you can see that these two directors like knew how to use color in a way that, you know, wasn't going to distract the audience. When I look at old Douglas Sirk movies, I'm like, wow, these are beautiful melodramas and they have color incorporated throughout the movie, but the colors don't make you like distracted and you just stare at the colors. They just blend into the movie so well. When you look at Pedro Almodovar's movies, especially his most recent movie, Pain and Glory, he really incorporates color in a way that like, yes, color is there, but once again, like Douglas Sirk, it doesn't distract you from what's going on in the movie. In this movie, I was just like, oh my God, bright yellow and then bright green and bright pink and bright blue. And I'm just like, ugh. The like production designer really needed to like tone down like all these colors and maybe even the shades of colors. Cause I'm like, you're really just throwing out like bright colors everywhere. And it was really distracting at times. The songs in the movie are pretty good. I mean, I've heard the original Broadway recording of the songs, and for some of the songs in this movie, I prefer the original Broadway cast recording. Especially um, my favorite song, It's Time to Dance. The It's Time to Dance number in here, it doesn't feel as good as the original Broadway recording is. So I would just say, go listen to the original Broadway recording of It's Time to Dance because it is way better, and for me, it has more life to it. But yeah, the songs in this movie, they're pretty fun. I liked all of them. I didn't hate any of them. But yeah, I would listen to some of the Broadway recordings instead of the ones from this musical. But as Nicole Kidman said in this movie, give it some zazz. Ooh, Nicole was so good. She and Meryl, the boots has down. Also, Andrew. Those three, like, from the adult side, I'm like, y'all slay. Kerry Washington and Keegan-Michael Key were both good too, but I'm like, they were on the level that those other three were. James Corden, he is going to the electric chair, as I said, or ooh, the electric guillotine. That's where he's going. Ryan Murphy's direction in this movie, eh, it was on and off. Sometimes I'd be like, ooh, that was a cool way to present that. But sometimes I'd be like, oh, this is just kind of basic. But you know what? Ryan Murphy as a director, I don't think he has the flair he thinks he has. I mean, he's produced a lot of good work and I think he's a brilliant producer. But when it comes to like directing, I'm thinking, you're not the strongest. I mean, I've seen mostly all his directed movies he's done. I've watched Running With Scissors. I've seen Eat, Pray, Love. I've seen The Material Girl and Bare Bones. Overall, I like The Prom. I mean, I'm probably gonna watch it again. It really is a feel-good movie and you know, we could really use a feel-good movie during these times. So maybe I'm gonna give it more of a pass than I should, but you know, we'll see how it ages. Cause with Love, Simon, I watched it only once. I've only watched Love, Simon once. And the first time I watched it, I was like, this is amazing, the best movie, one of the best movies I've ever seen about teenagers. But then as I kept thinking about it, I was like, ooh, flaws I cannot like get past. So we'll see if I feel that way about this movie too, as like time goes on. But for now, I'm just like, 
it's sweet and it's nice and I will take it. So yeah. So that's all I had to say about The Prom, which is streaming on Netflix now. So if you have Netflix, go give it a watch if you haven't already. But yeah, if you like what I had to say, maybe you should, you know, like this video. And if you like what I'm talking about, because I talk about movies and Blu-rays, and I also do music reactions and anything else I want to talk about in the pop culture realm, because it's what my channel, if you think any of that is very interesting, then you should go ahead and, you know, subscribe to my channel, because why not? Okay, you guys, thank you for watching this movie review and coming to my channel. And hey, if you've seen the movie already, why don't you tell me below in the comments what you thought about it. Did you like it or did you not like it? You know, tell me what you guys thought about it. And you know, until the next video, you guys, I will see you then. Mm-hmm. Okay, bye.